Today I'm going to show you how to do a new banner for your YouTube channel with the proper sizes and locations so that it shows up properly on your desktop, on a tablet, on your smartphone, or even on a smart TV. Well, let's get started. Welcome back. My name is Dave and this is Fuzzy Tutorials. All right, so where we're gonna start is first you need to know how big of a graphic you have to make and where to put everything. So to help you out with that, I created a template which is available on my website. So you can find that here at fuzzyd.ca or www.fuzzyd.ca. And once you hit the front page, you're gonna click on resources on the menu and just scroll down. And here is your YouTube channel header template or your banner template. Just click on that. And then you can, you can either just view it there as you're working or you can download a copy of it and if you want to download it you just click on the little download button there and then make sure that you've got save file selected and then hit ok but we're not going to bother so we'll just hit cancel okay now i've already got a copy of it of course on my computer So we can just open it up to have it handy. Okay. So as you can see, we need to make it 2560 by 1440, which is not exactly um, 4K size, but that is 16 by nine. And this is how we lay it out. So in the middle, we've got this area here that's gonna show up on either tablet or mobile phone. And out to the very edges here in the orange, that's gonna be your desktop on the when you're looking at it on the computer. And then the whole thing uh, will show up on some smart TVs. Uh, other smart TVs, it's still just going to show the desktop area. It just depends on the, on the programming. Um, every smart TV kind of has their own version of the YouTube software. Okay, so uh, we're going to be doing this in uh, Inkscape. Now, Inkscape is uh, completely free, and it's available for uh, Windows and Mac OS and Linux. And you can just find it at inkscape.org, I believe. And uh, the nice thing about it uh, is that, of course, it's free. There's no subscriptions or anything. And it does pretty much anything that you can do with Illustrator, minus the odd little thing here and there. Or so I've been told. I'm not an Illustrator guy. Um, you know, I used it once. 15 years ago and I didn't like it very much because I was a Kraldrov guy back then. But um, it's free, so I thought it would be a good option to show you all how to use. And uh, what I'm going to show you in this, I mean, it's applicable to any graphics program if, if you know how to do the same stuff. I mean, obviously the tools might be a little different and some of the quirks might be a little different, but that shouldn't matter too much. So we'll go ahead and bring it up here. Let me just find where I've got it. Okay. So 
what you're going to want to do is create a new document and I'm not sure why it does this to me all the time on new documents I'm not a guru on this program by any stretch so I'm just going to size this the same as the other one was all right I'm just going to close this first one. Don't need to have two of these open. And I guess I could have worked with that first one. Um, I use a different program, so uh, I forget sometimes that this doesn't give you the opportunity to set the sizes before it actually opens the new one. Okay, so we're going to go up here to File and then Document Properties. And we're going to set our units to pixels. And I'm just going to quickly refer back. So 2560 by 1440. So 2560 by 1440. Okay, and now we're going to zoom to page. All right, so what we're going to want to do now is we're going to set up some guidelines. So we're just going to drag a few out here. I like putting them at the edge of the page just in case I bring stuff in that's larger than the page I can see where it's supposed to end and we're going to drag a couple more it doesn't really matter at this point exactly where we drag them to because we're going to type in manually to get them just right and we're going to do the same from the top ruler all I'm doing is clicking and dragging them down Okay, and we'll drag a couple more just in the general vicinity. And then all we're going to do is double click on these guidelines and then we can type it in manually. So once again, we're going to change it to pixels. And that does say zero, so it's like we're good. And then our next one needs to be at 507 pixels, as you can see there. So once again, we just double click. Oh, let's select everything in that box. So 507. Okay, and then this one is going to be 2053, this one. So 2053. All right, and we'll do last one oh there we go and that's going to be 2560 so 2560 okay and then i'm just going to quickly do these other ones here so that first one is going to be 508.5 
sorry, actually that's going to be zero. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think I just goofed. Hang on a second. Let's do this one again. Yeah, it's the Y that's got to be zero. <laughs> Oops. Okay. And yes, 508.5. Now, I just wanted to point out real quick before I put that in, actually. So you'll see I've got these sizes that's showing it from the bottom. But it's going to be identical distance from the top. I just did it this way so it would be more readable and fit in a little better without too many intersecting lines. And then this one at the bottom, you would actually set it to the 931.5. So just... Finish setting this one up here. So 508.5. Oh, I suppose I forgot to change it to pixels, didn't I? Oh, I guess I better fix that. So we'll just grab this. <laughs> Drag it back up a little bit. You just got to make sure that the little hand shows up before you double click on it. Okay, so change this to pixels. Now we can go 508.5. All right. And then this one's going to be. Switch that to pixels. And then. It's going to be 931.5. Okay. Now I'm kind of a, an old school graphic artist, so I like to work in layers. So we're going to Create a couple more layers here. So I'm just going to call this, we're going to call this the fade layer. You'll see why that's important in a couple of minutes. And we're going to take this bottom layer here and we're going to rename this to background. Now, the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to be putting a gra background image in there. So we'll just select that top one again and then hit plus. And then we're going to call that our foreground. All right. So we're going to select our background layer here. And then I'm going to grab some images I well by the way this is what we're going to be shooting for here so let me just bring this up so you can look at it so this is very very simple I'm just showing you where stuff has to go this isn't a tutorial on how to design a banner uh, per se I'm just going to show you how it has to be laid out but actual design concepts and that kind of thing. It's a little bit outside of the scope of this. So I will just bring this down so we can refer back to it when we want to. For now, we're just gonna minimize that. All right, so I'm gonna take this picture of the camera and we're going to drag it in here. Now this is a pretty beat up looking old camera. This is actually one of my old film cameras. I don't have it anymore. I, I gave away all my old film camera stuff, but um, 
but we're going to need to resize this. So we're just going to zoom out to selection. And we'll click that once again so we get the right mode here. And then we're going to hold our option. Sorry. I'm kind of a more of a Mac guy than a Windows guy these days. I have to pardon my occasional mistakes on what I call the keys. So you're going to hold your Alt key and your Shift key down. Now this, I believe it's a Shift key that constrains the size, and the option, sorry, the Alt key will keep it in the middle. And no, Shift is not the right key for that. Um, let's just get rid of that here. It must be the control key here. Okay, so we'll drag it into about the right place and let's constrain that okay now you notice that it's over top of our guidelines here so this is why i wanted guidelines at the edge of the page so that we can properly see it and we're just going to nudge it now I'm, I'm actually doing what's called a super nudge so i'm holding the shift key down and it nudges it by a factor of 10. we're just going to move it until we get stuff where we want it here i think that's about where i had it before on the old one we could just check that real quick and yeah that looks like about the right position okay now we want that faded down a bit and some of the sharp eyed people out there might say, well, Hey, why couldn't you just adjust the opacity of the camera to fade it down, which you could do. The problem with this is this is a little quirk in the program. Uh, it's only this newest version that has added the ability to export directly to a JPEG and they missed something. So if you export your image to a PNG, it will honor that opacity setting and it'll show up the way it's supposed to. But if you wanted to export it directly to a JPEG or JPG, then it ignores that opacity setting and it comes out at full intensity. So this is why I had to make that fade layer because we're gonna put a white box over top of this and then set the translucency of that. That it honors, but for some reason, imported images like this, it doesn't. So, and it's just for JPEGs. It's kind of an annoyance, but and you might ask, well, why don't I just do it as a JPEG? Well, because when you're doing a banner for your Google site, it'll let you use a PNG, no problem. Where the problem comes in is Facebook doesn't like PNGs on a YouTube page. So if you bring in a, 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 a view of your, or a, a link to your channel into Facebook, it will, uh, it, it won't display that banner properly. So it's always better to have it as a JPEG. And the same thing with your thumbnails. Now we're not gonna show you how to do thumbnails that's outside of the scope of this tutorial, but just be advised that you should always do your thumbnails in the JPEG format. Otherwise, when you, uh, when you create a link to one of your videos in Facebook, the uh, graphics won't show up. And now there is a way to fix that once you replace it with a JPEG, but it's a bit of a process. You can actually find a video uh, on my tutorial channel on how to do that, how to fix the uh, Facebook preview. Uh, in any case, uh, we're going to put this back up to full 
opacity. And then we're going to go to our fade layer and select that. And we're going to go down here, or sorry, up here. And we're going to draw a rectangle. And that only needs to be the size of the actual page, but it looks kind of funny if you don't cover the whole photo. So you notice that snaps into place. Now, normally this would not be see partially see through like this, but because I was playing around with this earlier, of course, doing a dry run, I uh, that's the settings I had used on it before. So if yours comes in solid, which it most likely will, so we can go to settings for this. Um, you have to pardon me just a little bit here. Um, okay, here we go. So our fill and stroke tab. And then we can just adjust our alpha. And I've got it set at 85, but let's see if you adjusted it you can see it's changing it live so we're just going to put it back to the 85 that we used for the example okay so now we're going to go back to our layer tab here and we're going to go to our foreground now if you want to make it uh, more faded than that or less faded it's completely up to you this is your banner after all i'm just showing you the basics of how to lay this stuff out okay so now that we have our our top layer selected we can start laying in the rest of it so we're just going to refer back to our example here okay so i've got some photos in the middle laid out so Go up here and we'll grab these photos. We're making a banner for Bob's photography. So these are before and after pictures of doing some uh, color correction. I'm not saying it's very good color correction. You know, just whipping together some quick examples. And just grab another picture. Now these uh, these couple of example pictures, this is actually pictures I took, but you can find uh, very similar stuff to this on uh, a website called pexels.com and they're completely free. And uh, they do have, when you're looking at for photos and video and stuff like that, uh, they do have some sponsorship links to Shutterstock as well in there. But uh, most of the stuff that you'll that you'll find there is free. Although they do accept donations to the individuals who posted the photos. So we've got our pictures here to work with. So we're just going to do some resizing, and I'm just going to quickly refer back, and I want to just get the kind of the spacing correct here. So we need to leave enough room for our text. So we're going to just drag another one of these guidelines down and we're going to put it as a spot to line up our pictures, leaving us enough room. when we lay our text in there and once again we need to of course keep these in our within our guideline boundaries here okay so keep forgetting it's control to constrain the aspect ratio
And then we'll do the same one, same thing here. Okay, now we can select our three photos. Uh, something I wanted to mention, just so you don't accidentally move stuff around, you can go into your other layers and we can lock these layers so the stuff can't be moved. And we'll go back to our foreground layer here. Okay, so we'll just draw a selection box around these three photos. And we're going to go over here to our align and distribution tab where you can hit shift control A if it's if the tab's not available here. And then we're going to go distribute. So we're going to make the horizontal gaps between the objects equal. All right, so that's spaced out. All right, now we're going to uh, grab a text tool here. And I'm just going to do it down below here because it's just a little, a little easier to see until we actually get it in place. And we can bring up our text and font here. Go to the text tab. Now the reason I'm doing it this way, instead of typing it directly in over here, which you could, but I found that under some circumstances, and I don't know exactly what those circumstances are, if you're typing it in directly down over here, it uh, ignores when you hit the space bar. So we'll type it in in here. Bubs. landscape photography all right now we're going to apply okay so we want to select our text here and we're going to go over to font and i think the font i used for this is impact so that's a nice tall bold font we'll apply that okay and let's bump up our font size a bit let's try 48 72. Okay. Actually, let me just take a look here again. And no, that's actually not the font I used. That one's too condensed to be able to fit where we want it to. So I'm actually going to change that to one called Cooper. Now you probably won't have this font, but it's not hard to find out on the internet. I don't actually remember what site I got it from. Okay, we'll just apply that. And we'll have to drop that font size back down a bit. Okay. All right, I think that's kind of close enough. And you'll see why in a second. So we're just going to bring it in here. And I need to zoom back in here zoom to our page okay so now we can take our font here and give it the spacing that we want and then we can grab our corners here and 
just drag it to the size we want. And we should leave a little bit of space here, give it some breathing room. So when we add our drop shadow, it won't be cut off when we're viewing it on the desktop. And actually, we need to do the same with our photos here. We just need a little bit of breathing room. So I'm just going to do a single super nudge in on these. Okay. And we're going to do the same with our text here. And then we'll resize this to kind of match the edge all right so now we'll just drop it down a little bit okay so now we're going to select these and we're going to go up to filters and down to shadows and glow and we're going to put in a drop shadow and Click on the live preview. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we can apply that. And we can go to the next one. And back to filters. Drop shadow. Apply and select that one. Bring that back up. Well, I moved it off screen or off the oh, past the app a little bit, and we'll apply that. And we can do the same for our text preview. And we can apply that. And then if we want to change our text color, we would just come down here and we can change it to whatever suits our fancy. So we could make it purple. We could just do like a left click or we can do a nice blue like that. And we can kick it down just a little bit more. Okay. Usually you're safe to get it pretty much right to the line, top and bottom. It's the left and right edges that can sometimes um, not display right out to the edge on your center section on your browser. Or sometimes if they're on a tablet, it'll cut off the edges a little bit. So. That's why I like to give a little breathing room on the ends here. Okay. Now you can add stuff into these sections, of course. When you're on a full web browser on your, on your computer, then it, this is going to display out to the edges here. But you don't want to put stuff out here that is necessary for the user to see if they're viewing it on say a tablet or or a smartphone or something so make sure you put your main text in this center section especially and whatever else you you really need them to see and then you can put more inconsequential stuff out in these sections here so that's why i just chose these stars and polygons tool so we can just make one of those anyway. actually we can drag it in a little bigger here And we can set our whatever color we want on that. And if you want an outline on these, you just hold 
your shift key down and click on a color and it'll give you an outline. And then if we wanted to, we could also add a shadow to that. Now, of course, there's nothing saying that you have to put a shadow on it. Okay. And then we're just going to duplicate this. Let me see. Let's try to remember the duplicate shortcut there we go so that was uh control d and our alignment will kind of automatically snap and then if we want to we can come over here and and I have forgotten how to do this already in this program. I want to mirror it. Well, I'm not going to hunt around for that. We'll just click it again until we get our rotate handles. And then we can rotate it the opposite direction. There we go. So that's it for our design phase, such as it is. Now we're just gonna go to our export tab. And if this tab isn't available here, you can just hit your shift control E. Now it says export PNG image, but that's a holdover from the change they just made. You can export it as a, a JPEG. You've got some tabs up here and we want to make sure that it's going to export the entire page and then we can go down here to export as just double check make sure your image size is your 2560 by 1440 that way you know it is doing the whole page and we can export as and we'll just put it out on the desktop. And I'm not even going to bother naming it. You can name it whatever works for you. And we'll go down to JPG. And then we'll go save. And then this little window pops up. And you can just ignore this low quality warning they just really want you to use png instead of jpeg now i like to always set my quality at 97 that way it's virtually lossless it'll look really nice and clean but it's just enough compression so that it still reduces it to a decent size and you can leave the progressive turned off or on it doesn't really matter i just leave it on myself go okay and there we go there's our picture now we'll just view that that's perfect okay so we'll just close that and then you would save your image so you can do a save or a save as now I've already got a copy of this so I don't need to save it so I'm just going to close without saving normally you would save it and then it'll save it as uh, a .svg that's this file format uh, extension that they use and it is actually a proper svg file so scalable vector graphic all right so we can close that and then we're going to go your channel All right, so now we're going to go up here and click on this little camera icon that pops up when we hover over the picture.
and then we're going to go change and there it is there's our picture just select that and hit open now it doesn't show the what the whole width is going to look like properly but basically you can just leave it where it is and how it's sized and just hit done and then you go over here and you click on publish and then view channel and there we go that's all there is to it now you notice it actually did cut it off a little bit so i actually should have given the text a little more breathing room and we had enough room to do it because it only just cut a little bit off the bottom now i'm not sure if resizing the browser would help that i don't think it will but well i guess actually it did you get rid of the side menu so so i guess that all depends on the width that somebody's got their browser at if it's going to cut it a little bit off or not so just to be safe give yourself a little breathing room on the top and the bottom so uh, it's been a while since i've designed a new one like this so sometimes i forget stuff i'm getting old <laughs> And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Now I'm going to be doing a video soon on uh, how to customize your YouTube channel start to finish. But that's actually a fairly long and involved video to do. So I just wanted to do something that was kind of short and shorter and quick for you to to learn this skill it's been something i've been getting a lot of questions on lately on some of the groups i belong to so i thought i would put this together so thanks for hanging out with us today as always i hope you're able to learn something and we'll catch you on the next one bye for now